edge of town, a hundred blocks away. Is a transistor worth getting? And uh, that's the question that we're going to try and answer during this video accompaniment to the review, where I will, I'm Peter, I will be chatting to Teflon about nice. the game. Okay, um, so Tef, first of all, let's find out who it's bad. by. It's from a, a studio called Supergiant. So who are they and what have they done? Yeah, so uh, Supergiant Games, they're an indie developer, and they shot to fame in 2011 with a game called Bastion, which I'm sure that you, many of you know from the Xbox 360 release. Um, but it's a game that criminally didn't... Go well, I say criminally, it's not exactly a criminal act, but they didn't get a release on PlayStation 3, which I find strange. So it's strange, then, that the their second game, Transistor, which is out this week, is actually a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Fancy. So the Bastion was that was the the game. It was like an RPG, but it had a really sort of nice, pan painted almost um, art style, um, and famous for the narrator that talked all the way through. Yeah, and it was that narrator which was kind of the hook which got a lot of people interested in the game. But at the same time, it was also a really very well done action RPG. Uh, it had like very solid gameplay and it also had the as you mentioned the art style and the gameplay mechanic of having the ground come up underneath your feet as you walk out into the abyss almost so there was that to it uh, but the transistor is a very different project uh, the setting is completely different you now have a cyberpunk aesthetic with like art deco elements to in the design and that is really beautifully done uh, but it does have some similarities back to Bastion. So it's still an action RPG. Uh, you've still got Jason Cunningham doing voices. He was the narrator in Bastion, and he's now the voice of the eponymous, um, like, giant sword, the transistor, which is like kind of like a, a big green printed circuit board as well. Uh, so it's got those similarities, but it does also, in, in the gameplay, but it does also mix things up quite a lot. So this isn't a direct sequel, it's it's more sort of a building on the, the, the style of Bastion. Yeah, definitely. And um, I think what they've done is they've taken what worked well in Bastion and they've added ideas on top of that. So you've still got that voice, you've still got certain elements to the design stuff, but when it comes to the gameplay, the biggest change is with the new planning phase. Now, the there's lots of uh, pseudo programming language so you've got the transistor which looks like a printed circuit board you've got uh, your abilities are called functions but the biggest gameplay change is called turn which is open bracket then close bracket which is, is kind of a, a little running theme in the game it looks like and, programming language uh, yeah exactly and uh, what it does is it lets you freeze time completely you get to set out your moves and attacks that you want to make and when you then want to trigger those, they all happen within just like a few seconds. But in game time, it happens within about half a second. So you've got no retaliation at that point, and you get your attacks in. The downside to doing this is then that you've got to wait for turn to cool down. So, and during that point, which is maybe, I, I think, up to 10 seconds sometimes, um, you've got to avoid attacks. You can't dish out any damage of your own unless you've got a special ability, blah, blah, blah. But I think that is a really clever way of managing things. I mean, you've still got the ability to uh, play in real time, and sometimes that's even a better option. But then you also have the option to use turn, freeze time, get your attacks in, and that's just a very clever balance that they've struck. Yeah, that makes it sound like it would be sort of easier for people who aren't used to like quick reflex of games to get into and to get sort of be able to to still compete on the same kind of level as somebody that is very used to playing video games. Yeah, and I mean, um, I mean, what it really does is it makes each battle a bit more tactical, I guess, uh, where you can think out every single move and look at the big picture, and then once your flurry of attacks has hit, then you've all all you've got to do is you've got to worry about um, dodging the incoming attacks for the next few seconds. But th there are a lot of other tweaks which do, do also make it um, really quite accessible. So, for example, the health system. Uh, the transistor is allowed to have four of these um, functions active at any one time. 
and your health bar isn't actually for Red, who's the protagonist, but is for like one of these functions to get overloaded. So, in effect, you've got four health bars in a battle. Now, if you do take too much damage, what this means is that you have one of these functions locked off. You can't use it for the rest of that battle, you can't use it until you get to the, the next save uh, terminal area. And that means that, yes, you're at a handicap for the rest of that battle, but you've also got a bit of a lifeline. Uh, you can uh, tackle things in a different way, you know what you've got to do in order to get out of the situation. But then on the other side of things, you don't want it to be too easy. I mean, for the most more advanced players, uh, they're going to want some challenge to it. And so they've built in a system of handicaps for those people to turn on if they want them. And uh, in exchange for a little XP boost, then you can give the process a bit more of an advantage, make them more challenging and difficult to deal with. So, for example, um, they might deal double damage at its simplest level. Or... A more complex one would be that when, during normal battles, uh, when a process is killed, it will drop a cell, which will respawn into the same process if you give it time. If you pick it up, then it won't respawn. So you'll have limiters which will have the process spitting out multiple cells. If you don't pick up either of them, you've literally doubled the number of enemies that you've got to deal with. So there's a lot of optional difficulty which can actually become uh, really really important when you go up against the more difficult enemies later on in the game. So would you say it kind of eases you into the way you have to go about things? So it sounds like it, it sort of gives you plenty of opportunity to make the odd mistake as you're learning how it works, but then becomes sort of a slightly trippier further on, so you kind of have to learn its systems then. Yeah, because the process, I mean, they come in several different forms. So you have one which is kind of like a dog whose bark is worse than its bite because it's always barking at you and stunning you and stuff like that. That's a really annoying one actually. Uh, you've got like a kind of paparazzi camera which floats after you and tries to block your views and distract you, that kind of thing. And as you come into a battle every once in a while um, you will pull the turn trigger and it will then display like the upgrade because these enemies are evolving as you're playing a game as well. It will show the upgrade that they have got uh, and then you have to figure out, oh, okay, so that's that much harder. It can do this particular thing now and this is what I need to do in order to tackle it. And so then what about the RPG sort of elements? Is that, do you kind of build on your skills of other skill trees or how does that work? So it all comes together in the transistor itself. Um, You'll come to a terminal pretty regularly, almost after or before almost every single battle. And here you can then um, switch your loadout. You have four slots from primary functions, and these are on your face buttons on the DualShock 4. Um, and then each of these slots has got two potential uh, secondary slots. Additionally, there's up to four passive slots, and you can mix and match your uh, functions however you want. You've got these 14 functions across the whole game which you unlock and you might decide that you want to take your most powerful attack and use it to augment a different one which uh, shoots three shots for example or that same powerful attack will maybe make you more resistant to incoming fire that kind of thing so it's a very flexible system and you can literally bend it to pretty much however you want to play the game at all. So then, what about the, the story of it? If, it? if it's kind of building like Just that, does, do, do you gain um, the extra kind of abilities as the story progresses, or is it like a time thing? Is it like an XP-based thing? Well, it's, it's a mixture of both. I mean, the story starts off right in the middle of a key plot point. You've got Red, who's the protagonist, and she is just stood over the body of this guy who has the big transistor sticking out of his chest. And the transistor's like a huge sword, isn't it? It's like a... Yeah. That's it. It's basically a great big sword which is made to look like a PCB. Um, and <laughs> you don't really know what's going on at this point. The, the transistor starts talking to Red, uh, telling her to escape, and you start moving along. You go through the first few battles, uh, you maybe level up once or twice even, but then it's the first powers that you get are the first uh, new functions that you get 
come along when you find bodies on the floor. And it's sort of like the, the transistor is able to suck up their soul, or I, I guess it would be a digital imprint and stuff. Oh, like flash memory stored on this PCB. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Well, that's quite cool. Yeah, um, and once you've got the first few of these abilities, I think once you've got the first four, so you've got all of your slots maxed out, um, then it starts to turn to the, the traditional RPG progression. So you you gain experience from fighting battles, and then as you level up, you get to pick between um, a, a set of functions, um, a set of limiters, and like uh, opening up extra slots or earning, earning more points for the for the uh, functions that you can choose. But the functions themselves all have a kind of little backstory to them. They're all a different person, a different digital imprint, and as you use them in different ways, you unlock their backstory. And it ties into the overall plot of the game, which I don't really want to spoil too much about the story, but the Camerata, uh, who are a group which created the process, um, they're out to get red, basically. And they've already stolen her voice, and so now it's basically a, a story of her trying to survive and fight back against them. See, that that sort of plays into sure. something else that you said. You said that it has like a revenge feeling to it, and it, it, that makes it sound like it might be quite sort of gruesome, or, but it definitely looks more like it's very whimsical, and um, things you've said like privately before about um, this, What the, just tell us what the L1 button does. Okay, so um, she might not be able to speak, but uh, Red can still hum, and what this does in the game is you've got um, Darren Korb's brilliant soundtrack. Uh, his work was, again, one of the most popular things in Bastion, and um, he's back and he's, he's, he's created another fantastic soundtrack, and holding the L1 button gets Red to hum along with the backing. <laughs> And Which is brilliant. It is brilliant. And sort of like a uh, spotlight comes down from heaven. And it's beautiful. And <laughs> like it, um, her voice, well, her humming is done by um, Ashley Barrett, who was also on, I think she was only on one track from the Bastion soundtrack. But what she has done is just beautiful. Somewhere and it's so, it's so utterly, um, I, I guess, soulful. Is the way that I describe it. The way she, that because then in the game, like she's clutching the transistor, the beam of light comes down, and she's just humming along. And these are some really lovely compositions as well. And I found that basically every time I got to a new area, I was stopping and listening to the background music, and then holding the L1 button so I could hear a hum and add <laughs> this extra layer on top of it. And I think I, that sounds really cool. With when you're talking about like a revenge story and so like an RPG, somebody building their their skills and all this like combat going on, I think it's really nice that it still has that feeling of whimsy, and that kind of ties into the look of it as well. I think. Yeah, it ties into the look. It ties into how much time you can take during combat. And I mean, the combat isn't gruesome. You're basically going up against. Um, you're basically going up against like viruses in the system, that kind of thing, which have been turned into a physical form. And, yeah, just being able to just stop, sit back, close your eyes and listen to her hum is basically, it's just gorgeous. So, all things considered then, I think we probably know the answer to this, but do you think that people should be paying attention to Transistor this week? No, nah, not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. I mean... As, as, as I said at the start, uh, Bastion didn't make its way to the PlayStation 3, but it still has, for Supergiant Games as a company, there's still a lot of goodwill and a lot of knowledge about what they did with Bastion. So it shouldn't come as a surprise um, to anyone that was a fan of Bastion just how well this game has come out. And if you're not familiar with it, if you just want an action RPG, if you just want something that's really very, very pretty to look at... Um, then, yeah, definitely have a look at Transistor. <laughs>